walk-in cooler, uh, time for a contactor, three-phase contactor, uh, 208 coil, um, three-phase probably going to be, I don't know how many amps, at least 30, I'd like to put a 40 on it, um, can't read it anymore, but compressor probably only draws about oh, eight or nine amps probably. 51, yeah, so 7 times 8, 56, probably something like that. Anyways, um, okay, that's what I want to do. 40 amp, 40 amp three phase, two way coil. Hey world, hope you can see this video. I'm on the roof, obviously. Um, just wanted to show you guys some things I do. Um, I use wire numbers to uh, label my wires before I take them apart, uh, just to keep my phases right. Uh, I put up here uh, black, red, blue for my line phases, uh, black, red, blue. And I like, when I pull a contactor, I like doing the bottom ones first, um, and lay them in here, and that way, you can see how the wires go in and get everything all nice because it's a real bitch to see upside down and you don't know if the wires are in and you can just get them a lot better and you can use your screwdriver directly down you know on top of them and you know out here you can you can use the metal to support your you know when you're doing it so it just goes a lot faster and I just do my phases because these weren't colored so I just do 14 15 16 any numbers that you can remember or my book you know your book obviously gets used up line one two and three all the time so you just use a, a row of numbers for the new guys out there and uh, I use uh, you know whatever numbers you want for you know 10 and 11 I just use for my uh, line one and line two and put it up there like that for future you know so do a little labeling takes five or ten minutes but what's five or ten minutes you know when you're doing a bunch of other stuff so anyways uh, just for the new guys out there it's a nice way to keep your stuff labeled so you know what's what anyways okay uh, all right thanks for watching click like on the video subscribe all right take care bye. hey guys checking the voltage drop across a brand new contactor Got 0 0.03, 0 0.029, 0 0.034. That one I notice is a little weird with the nuts or something. Let me see here. Hang on a second. It's like there's some kind of coating on the threads. That... Oh well, that's that. <laughs> but anyways, I checked it, it was 0 0.029 across all of them before. It was hard doing it with the phone and everything. So what, what do you guys think? Brand new contactor. All right, uh, it's all in, good to go. Guys, hopefully you can see this. Um, anyways, this was pretty much time for a new contactor. I caught it when I was doing a condenser fan motor on this unit. It's pretty much 100% gone. So. Uh, Definitely not too far gone, but a little bit. But anyways, there you go. Hey world. Uh, hey guys. Um, hey, changing another contactor on a Heatcraft. Um, like I said on the other part of the video, uh, I like doing the bottom part first. It really works out well when you got this little metal shelf right here, and you can put in, you know, uh, put in your fan motors on the bottom. Uh, 
and I like putting them together so you kind of keep it all balanced and then uh, I always label my phases so I just do them whatever numbers 10 11 12 13 14 15 whatever numbers I have left in the book and uh, that way you keep your face straight. You can tighten it down and you can see where the wires are going in and you know that you got everything in in the bottom. It's a lot a lot easier than trying to do it upside down. So just do the bottom first and then you can swing it into the hole. Uh, a lot easier, man. Okay. And then once you get it mounted, work from the back towards the front. So uh, do your coil, your coil first. Yeah, do your coil first, and then uh, come up, do your push. Actually, do your main wires first, because then it'll tighten down on these things. And then, uh, then you can do these push-ons.